Golly, that's good. I cracked myself up. I still haven't found my first Blanton's. <laughs> that's different. I really like that. They're like together, like peas and carrots. That's funny. Sometimes accidents are good things. Peshods or pechods or pechaw. <laughs> this is not what I expected. <laughs> <laughs>。And hello, hello, hello.、Uh, it is Thursday, and it's Burbcast time, and this is the time where we get to shake off the day <laughs> and、uh, dig into some some bourbon. <laughs> We're finishing up the benchmark series. This is the sixth of six bottles.、Uh, we started off at the very beginning with benchmark number eight. It's an 80 proofer,、uh, and that's only 12.99. And then from there, we went up to the top floor. See what I did there? See? And <laughs> that was 86 proof uh, at uh, only 14.99. And then from there, went up to the small batch 90 proof, and that goes up to 17.99 where we are. And then、uh, let's see, bonded, 100 proof, and that goes up to 22 or、uh, 1999. The 125 proof, full proof, was last week, and、uh, 2299 on that one. And now we finish up with a single barrel. Somebody said earlier、uh, when I posted a promo for this that、um, that they said that this is their favorite. So we're going to find that out. This one comes in a 95 proof, so sitting kind of right in between the、uh, well. I was going to say sitting in between the, I will say small batch and bonded, which it is. It's <laughs> 95 proof. It sits right in between the 90 proof small batch and the 100 proof bonded. So yeah, yeah, I'm so smart. <laughs> okay, or not. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, we're outside. We're outside today. How about that? We、uh, didn't get to do this last time. Well, it's a little bit, a little bit cloudy. <coughs> didn't get to do this last time. Because it got really windy just before burbcast time, so we thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot today. So here we are. Okay. So what makes this one different? Well, the only thing that makes this different from everything else that we've had is it is a single barrel. So every single barrel is going to have roughly 55 gallons, eh, give or take,、uh, at the end of the at the end of the well. Evaporation is going to take some of that out, but they fill it with about 55 gallons, and、uh, then it sits for four or so years, and then、uh, you know what's left is what's left, and so that one barrel would put out a hundred and some bottles,、uh, and then that's it. That's all you get. Now there's going to be some variations because of the barrels. So not every single one of these. I mean, you're going to have a batch that's going to come out, but other than that batch, they're not all going to be the same. Which makes the single barrels kind of fun. Now, if you find one that you really, really like, oh my gosh, this is the best single barrel ever. Then it might be tough to want to finish that one. Or maybe you'll try another one and you won't like it as much. Or maybe you'll try another one and like it even more. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of. Doing the single barrel is you never know exactly what you're going to get. It's like Christmas every time you open one up, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. So、uh, now, before I go too far, too far, too far, too far,、uh, somebody last week suggested that because this is a single barrel, that I should put this up against another single barrel, the Blantons. And at the time, I thought, sure, why not? Okay, I can do that. And then I got thinking about it. I can't put these back to back. This is mash bill number one. This is mash bill number two. This is going to have a higher rye mash bill than this one. Mash bill on this one is rumored to be 75% corn, 17% malted barley, and only 8% rye. This being a higher rye mash bill could go as high as 18, 20%. I don't know. I didn't research it. So this could go up there, even if it's 15%. It's significantly higher than this one. So the mash bill on this is going to be a little bit different than this one. So I can, I'm not going to take them back to back like I thought I might. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's get into it here. All right. So this is the single barrel. 
Again, mash bill on all these is the exact same as your Stag, your George T. Stag, your E.H. Taylor, your uh, Eagle Rare, your Buffalo Trace. Exact same recipe, exact same mash bill, exact same barrel char. The difference is where it's in the where, uh, Rick House and how long it's aged. Buffalo Trace, they say eight or nine years. Um, uh, you know, the other ones have their own aging. Uh, Eagle, Eagle Rare is a 10 year age. So this is why it takes these products so long to get to market because they're aged for so long. Benchmark, not so much. <laughs> Four years, tops. All right. Now some of them they could let go longer, but they're pretty good the way they are. I thought the bonded was really nice. The full proof that we had last week, somebody had a really neat um, suggestion on YouTube. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at Beautiful Bourbon. Um, gentleman there said that uh, that it reminded him of Stag. Now, if you'll remember, <laughs> this is back in our first 100 Burbcast. This is number 213, by the way. Back in the first 100 Burbcast, we did a series on Buffalo Trace, and one of those that we did was Stag, which at the time was called Stag Junior. And you saw it in the intro where I go, "Ha! Not what I expected." Well, it wasn't. Uh, but I let it sit for two and a half years and barely touched it. And two and a half years later, I drank of it and it was like, oh, 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 that's, that's good. That's tasty. That's yummy. I like that. So I'm thinking, based on this, what, this viewer's suggestion that maybe full proof, if I let it sit maybe six months, come back to it, maybe it'll cool down and give me all that flavor like Stag did. Different aging. Uh, but and but the same mash bill, <laughs> which is what's crazy about all this. All these are put out by Buffalo Trace, the exact same mash bill. All right. Oh, this may be the fruitiest of them all on the nose. Raspberry right away. Yeah. Um, hey, Tom, how are you? I'm glad you're watching. Now, last time I did this outside, you were complaining because the birds were loud. I will take the birds over the mowing any day. I had a neighbor over here mowing. I had a neighbor over here mowing. But before we got started, they stopped. <laughs> Cheers to me. <laughs> All right. It's a, a lighter caramel. Caramel degree. Whereas the bonded and the foolproof had honey on the nose, this one has just a slight bit of it, not as much. There's a little bit there. It's definitely more fruity. Um, this, this, uh, this presents a little bit almost more like a wine on the nose, which is... Well, you know, if you, if you think about the mash bill one, if you go back and you smell the white dog mash bill and you taste that, to me, it's got almost a wine-like quality to it. So going back and sniffing this and smelling wine on it or fruit is not that far out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, this has definitely got some um, raspberry, some plum. Now, the foolproof last week gave me black cherry, and I'm not getting that on this. And it's the exact same recipe. It's just, it blows the mind. Blows the mind. All right. Let's get into it. That's fantastic. That may have the most flavor of any of them in the series. Now the full proof tasted good once we proofed it down because it was just really hot. And it, I may come back to that in a month and go, okay, that's got a lot of flavor in it, but this has more of those fruit notes than any other pour. The bonded, 
and well, really all of them, from the number eight to the top floor of the small batch and the bonded, all of them had a, had a sweet nose. And then you got into the palate and they were a little bit more earthy. They had a lot more oak to it. Um, and the, the, the sweet stuff, the fruity side of it just kind of, just kind of, you know, went down. This, on the other hand, has got a very fruit forward palate. The bloom was healthy. It didn't overwhelm. The bonded, the hunter proof didn't overwhelm either. Uh, but this was not, this does not come off as hotter than it's supposed to be, which is nice. Um, all right, let's, let's get you a mouthfeel reading here. It's okay. Um, again, a little thin. Uh, compared to other bourbons of its ilk, right? Um, just a little thin on the mouthfeel, doesn't have a lot of that butteriness, which you might like, uh, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not so thin as to go, yeah, where is it? No, no, it's, it's okay. Um, it has less mouthfeel than the foolproof and the bonded for sure, um, but more than the number eight in the top floor, probably about equal with the small batch, um, from my recollection. All right, getting back into it here. It's got that earthiness to it, that oak is there. It's not as present as with the bonded and the foolproof, or really even the uh, small batch. The oak is not as strong in this, which, with a single barrel, that doesn't surprise me, right? Because if it's more than one barrel and they're blending it together, now you have the oak from this barrel and this barrel and this barrel and this barrel. Even the small batch has got multiple barrel <laughs> barrels that they combine. Uh, it's a smaller bunch of barrels that they combine, but they do combine barrels. This is a single barrel. So since it's only touched one barrel and it's only been in there for four years and you're not mixing it up in a soup of other barrels, uh, it makes sense that it would have a little less oak to it. And that may be why I'm getting more of a fruit forward note on it, on the palate. Um, it's actually really quite pleasant. Um, the, the less oak gives it a little less character, but not much. Uh, and that fruit forwardness really does bring out more for me. And you're talking about an 17% uh, malted barley too. So, um, and, and that's going to bring out some of your fruitiness, your nuttiness, some of that stuff too. And this does not have near the rice spice of the bonded or the foolproof. So if you're looking for one that has a lot of flavors that aren't the rye flavors and aren't the, aren't the oak flavors, this may be the one for you. And this is actually quite fantastic. All right, let's get to some flavors here. Very traditional. Um, it's got a lot of what you're looking for. Those caramels are there, cinnamons. Uh, I'm looking for the vanilla and really couldn't find a lot of it there. There's not that sweetness of the vanilla there. Um, maybe a little honeycomb. I'm not gonna tell you that the sweetness of honey is there either, but a little honeycomb. As far as the fruit notes, I'm going back to raspberry and plum. I'm not finding black cherry in this one, which is fine. Uh, raspberry and plum, raspberry is not a, not a common note for me, and I actually rather like it in here. So um, this does a lot for me. <laughs> this is this is a nice board. This is this is a bottle that I see more often out there. I see I think the small batch and the single barrel more, and the bonded. Those are the three that I see the most. Whereas, well, of course the number eight is going to be on every bottom <laughs> every bottom shelf everywhere. Um, Top floor I don't see a whole lot of, and uh, full proof I don't see a whole lot of. Um, but the other ones are, are rel relatively accessible. You can find them just about uh, almost anywhere you look. Uh, just go on ohlq.com and you'll find where they are present. Um, they're gonna show on the, on the map 
where they are in the state and hopefully they're not gonna be too far away from you. Let's get into water. I think before I go too much further, I'm gonna reset what's going on here because I think I'm missing stuff. And something just looked weird in the feed, so I'm just gonna go back and get back to it. Oh, that looks better. Justin and Bill and Tom. Hey, how are you all? Uh, Bill and Tom, Justin, I hadn't had a chance to say hello to you yet, so I'm glad you're here. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. A whole bunch. All right, so let's put a little water on this. Told you that it looked weird. Now it doesn't look weird anymore. Now I can see who's, uh, who's watching. I don't know where that happened. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. Hey, Tom's uh, Dick, uh, Dick, a different, a different Tom, a different Tom is what I'm trying to say. Tom Hickson, how are you, sir? I'm glad you're here. Thank you for watching. I, I did a little more promotion on this one. I put it out on a few more pages. Uh, I wanted to introduce Beautiful Bourbon to some folks who maybe hadn't seen it before. Uh, because, you know, what we do here is fun and we get a chance to interact a little bit and then I take this and I throw it over on YouTube and, and so far so good. Um, you know, we're, we're growing, it's slow, uh, but you know, I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking for, for uh, free bottles. I'm not asking for fame and fortune. I'm just, I'm just saying, please watch me. Please validate me. <laughs> and so far so good. I will tell you this too. Uh, I answer every like message I get on YouTube, every single one. Uh, and some people, you know, they, they get back with me a couple times and I, I, I make sure that I pay attention to that because I think, I think being, if, if people are gonna reach out to me, then I kind of owe it to them to reach back. Now, if somehow this blows up and we end up with 100,000 subscribers, that may change. <laughs> But we're at 284, I think, today, so <laughs> 100,000. I'm happy with the 284 I have. If it never goes any bigger than that, I'm all right. <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong. I'd like it to go up. So if you're on YouTube, like and share, like and share. What do they say? Smash that like button or follow button. or I, You don't have to smash anything. Just click. <laughs> all right. And tell people about us. There's a guy out of Albuquerque that is a huge fan. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think it's Robert. Um, but uh, it's neat that we're reaching that far. And what, what's available to him is different than what's available to me, which is really cool. Uh, he's got his favorites. And some of the things that we cover here, he can't get. Like some of this benchmark, he's never seen it. Which is really unfortunate because for the price, these are all really nice pours. Honestly. <laughs> All right, so this is with a little water on it. Let's hope it uh, kind of brings up that mouthfeel a little bit. Not really. It still seems a little thin. Um, I won't go so far as to tell you that it's, it's overly thin. It's not like the 80, 80 proof um, old number eight, um, but it, it doesn't have the same body as the last two that we've tried, the bonded and the full proof, or even for that matter, the small, uh, small batch. Um, it's just a little bit on the thin side, uh, but that doesn't mean it's undrinkable. The flavors are really, really nice. And adding a little bit of water to it, it brought a little bit of that heat back, not a lot, Believe it or not, I mean, sometimes when you add water, it opens it up and the, the heat comes back, which is, you'd think you're proofing it down, right? And, and you shouldn't get as much. And sometimes, yeah, you proof it down and you don't get as much. This one, a little bit of that heat came back, just a little bit. And um, it didn't really do much to the, to the mouthfeel and it didn't really do much for the flavor. It didn't really open it up a whole lot. Matter of fact, I'd say it didn't really open it up much at all. Um, like I said, a little bit of that heat came back, but other than that, this is not one that I would recommend adding water to. It just didn't, it just didn't uh, do anything for it really, honestly. Uh, all right, so last test. 
And then I'm going to introduce you to what's coming up next week. <laughs> All right, once again, gorgeous ice sphere. Look at that thing. It's like, it's like holding a bubble from Oz, you know? <laughs> gorgeous. I, I, I told the story before. I'll tell it again really briefly. The first time I saw a clear ice sphere, I was in um, Raleigh, North Carolina. We had gone there to do some video work. And a friend of mine has family there, and he was on the crew, and he said, we ought to go to this place. And so we went, I think it's called uh, the Roxy. And it's kind of like a speakeasy, it's downstairs, you know, and, and we went down there and I ordered something called a dark side because it sounded good. It was fantastic. And that was the first time I ever saw a, a clear, solid ice sphere. And it was about twice the size of this one too, by the way. And the glasses were huge. So, a <laughs> it had to be a, been a decent sized drink to make it look like you were actually getting something out of it, you know? It, it was definitely a bigger, a bigger drink than you would normally get in a bar, but boy, was that good. It, it definitely had some simple syrup in it. it oh my gosh, it was, it was really good. <laughs> but ever since then, I've been in love with the gorgeous uh, clear ice sphere, the gorgeous ice sphere. And it's amazing how few many, or how, how few many bars actually do the, the ice sphere. I've been to a lot of different places because there's a lot of great whiskey bars around. And we're gonna start to explore those yet this summer. We're gonna get out and about, and uh, I gotta find my crew yet and get out, but we're, we've been invited to a few places, we're gonna go. We're gonna get out of the basement. Now, these are gonna be specials. They're not gonna be our normal Thursday night Burbcast. Those, those I've got a schedule, but we're gonna do some specials. They're gonna be outside the normal Burbcast and they're gonna be on location. So that's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to that. All right. For Paul, we're gonna do a finger stir. Chris is watching. Hey, Chris. Now, Chris is the one who told me that the single barrel is his favorite, I believe. I think I have that right. I will tell you, Chris, that of the six, that the single barrel has, for me, the best flavor, but it's also just a little bit thin on the mouthfeel, um, and it's a little hard to get over, but we tried it on water, not a fan. We're gonna try it on ice and see what it does. Um, the small batch, the bonded, and the foolproof did fine on ice. We'll see how this one does. I'm not an ice user for the most part, although there are some. I think the bonded and the foolproof, the foolproof especially, presented its well, itself nicely over ice because again, when you put it on ice, when you cool it down, it mutes the flavors and mutes the heat. Um, so foolproof worked out really well that way. Now let's try this one. This brought out more of the oak. There's still some fruit notes, but it got a little more earthy. That honeycomb is coming out a little bit. Definitely got a little more oaky. That is correct. I think the ice opens it up nicely. In certain ways, yes. In other ways, no. Can I, can I equate the neat with the ice? No. And that's not to say that either one of them are bad. I would tell you that they're different. So having it neat is gonna present one way. Having it on ice is gonna present another way. And I'm gonna add a little bit more to this. I'm gonna get back into it here. I'm gonna cool this down again. Add a little bit more on it. I'm not going anywhere, so I don't have to put the cap on that. <laughs> I do actually rather like cotton, cotton seed, cottonwood. I do rather like that the, the, these are not corks. I know some people are purists and they love the corks. I don't mind the screw tops. I really don't. And you're not taking away from the experience for me if you give me a screw top. I mean, with a cork, yeah, you're going to fill the bottle. But these screw top things, they've got a, a liner on the inside of the cap. It's not like you're going to have any air or whatever escaping. You know, it's like, like it's... Remember the, the, well, if you're young, you won't remember this, but if, 
you're <laughs> not so young, <laughs> like me, <laughs> you're gonna remember when you were like drinking soda pop and you could reach in there and you could pull the liner out of the bottle cap. Well, I'm not gonna try to do that with this because I'm gonna leave it on there, but it seals it quite nicely. You don't have to worry about a cork on this and it's just, it's just nice. I don't mind, I don't mind the screw top. And I kind of like the fact that, that Weller still does it on some of their products. All right, finger stir. Give it a few. All right, Chris, you've told, I think that was you that told me that last week or the week before to give it a couple of minutes. So we're gonna do that. Gonna give it a couple of minutes. Um, so this again, let me just real quick. This is called McAfee or McAfee Brothers. Uh, these were people who did the initial surveying uh, in Kentucky, in Frankfurt, th that uh, surveyed the land that then became uh, where Buffalo Trace Distillery is now sitting. Um, so that's why they named it after the McAfee or McAfee or whatever brothers. Um, I, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think as far as stories go of an origin of a bourbon, it's, that's about the weakest one there is. <laughs> hey, let's, let's find the guys that, that brought us a shovel so we could break ground. <laughs> I think his name was Bob. This is Bob's bourbon. I, I just, the, the, I, I'm glad that they remember who it was. I'm glad they're giving them a little bit of credit. <laughs> that's still a that's still a weak story. <laughs> just that's, these are guys that surveyed the land. <laughs> you didn't have anything else. You didn't have any other heritage anywhere else in the place. That, and I guess when they do the surveying, I think I even wrote it down here. Um, did I put it here? Did I put it here? Oh, I didn't. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, okay, so. Uh, the brand name was purchased by Sazerac somewhere between 1989 and 1992, and McAfee's was added to the name in honor of the McAfee or McAfee uh, brothers who surveyed a site just north of Frankfurt in the late 1700s that became the site of Buffalo Trace. The surveyor mark, uh, the marks left behind are known as benchmarks. I was once there, do I get a brand named after me? <laughs> I picked my nose and flicked one right there on the, on the property. <laughs> can, can I have to... <laughs> I, want, I, want, I want it to be called the Booger brand. I just, it just, it's just, it's a weak story. There's so many great stories out there about how bourbons get started. That was like the weakest one. I just, I, I just find it amusing, I find it funny. For a $25 bottle, it's not a bad pour. Daily drinker, absolutely not. Larry's watching. Hey, Larry, how are you? All right, so I've given her a few minutes, as Chris has asked me to do. We'll give it one more finger stir. In honor of Paul Smith, who's been on the broadcast a couple of times. It'll hold up. If you want to use it in a cocktail, it doesn't hold up as well as the bonded or the foolproof, and that's expected. I mean, those are higher proofs. Um, and the single barrel having less oak on it because you're only in one barrel, it's just not, it's, to me, it isn't presenting itself as well as the bonded or the foolproof. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, would I prefer it neat over anything else? Yes. Um, but it's not bad on ice. Uh, it does... It does bring out a little sweetness that wasn't there on the water for sure. A little more of the caramel, caramel if you have a degree. A um, little more of that uh, and maybe a little bit more fruit. I mean, this... All of these have been a really solid pour. From the number eight, to the top floor, to the small batch, to the bonded, to the foolproof, and now the single barrel. If you haven't tried Benchmark from Buffalo Trace Distillery, then you're missing out on some great pours. Yes, they're inexpensive. The, the number eight is $12.99. And then this is the most expensive one at $24.99, double the price. But $24.99? There are a lot of 
bourbons out there that are more expensive than this, and they may be just as good. But if you haven't tried the Benchmark series, if it's available to you, uh, you really ought to. I mean, you might be surprised, excuse me, at what might become your next, as Chris put it, daily drink. Excuse me. What Chris uh, said was, might be your next daily drinker. Um, I'm trying my best not to do dailies anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, this is the first pour since last Friday. Mm -hmm. I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> and I've got, a, I've got a full weekend and, and most of next week, so it'll probably be next Thursday before I pull out another one. And by the way, next Thursday, let's talk about next Thursday. <laughs> We're starting a whole new series. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, here we go. Is it Jack Daniels? No. We're starting a series on barrel proof pours. Now this first one that we're gonna do just happens to be a release from OHLQ. This is their second release. This is a single barrel, barrel proof pour. Now, in full disclosure, I've had this before. It has been a while. It's been a couple of years now that I think about it. And I was looking for a high proof pour. Um, I don't know, month and a half, two months ago. I was in the mood to just have something, ha, right? And I went downstairs and I pulled this bottle out and I'm just about to open it. I thought, oh, I can't open this. We've never reviewed it. Huh? So this is gonna start uh, our June uh, series on barrel proof pours. Um, this one, if you haven't had it, will surprise you. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Cause again, it's been a while since I've had it, but I have had it. Um, and, and very few of these are, are going to be pours that I've had. As a matter of fact, this may be the only one in the series that I have already had. I re re Don, Don's with us. Hey Don, how are you, sir? Uh, I regularly have a single barrel for, for them in, from them in my bar. Uh, I've. So, full disclosure, in 2020, I bought a bunch of bottles of these because I was gonna give them away to family. I ended up not giving them away to family. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of these. Um, uh, so I, I'm gonna drink them in front of you. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> they, can, they can have the rake they got for Christmas or a broom or something. They're, they're not gonna get this good stuff, all right? Or any other barrel proof uh, bourbon that I'm, no, no, they're mine, they're mine. <laughs> Some things have got to be earned. All right, so this is, this is what we're starting uh, next week. Next Thursday, we're doing this one. I'm late, sorry I missed the verb cast. Here, Austin, you're here. Vince is here, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, Austin, yeah, so um, we're about done. So you can go back and check out the Memorex version or you can check us out on YouTube at Beautiful Bourbon. Um, but this, this starts uh, our next series. We're gonna do barrel proof pours and we're gonna start off uh, with this OHLQ number two, the single barrel, barrel proof Jack Daniels, and that is next week right here on Beautiful Bourbon. Uh, thank you a lot for watching. You could be doing anything else and you're here, and uh, I hope you had fun. I always have fun doing this. I hope you learned something. I always learn something when I do this. Uh, you know, again, somebody talked about uh, putting up a, the, the single barrel uh, here with the Blantons, and I had to stop and say, wait a minute, that's two different mash bills. I can't do that. It was a good idea, <laughs> you know, but I think I would need the E.H. Taylor single barrel, which may not even be the same mash bill. I think it is. I think it is, but it's not, it's not talked about that much. I think it's the same mash bill as, as this one, which is the number one, but the Blanton's is definitely number two. Uh, I think that goes along with the Rock Hill Farms. That's a number two. Uh, maybe Elmer T. Lee, that could be number one. I think it's number two though. So there are, there are a few pours on the number two mash bill, but uh, all the benchmark are number one, along with Eagle Rare, Stag Jr., George T. Stag, Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, all those are the same recipe, the same mash bill, the same barrels, number four char, all the same. Uh, just different aging in different places in the, in the Rick House. So 
Justin, cheers to you. And we will see you next week as we start getting into the barrel proof stuff. And you might, if I go another week without having another pour, you might just, I'm telling you, you might just see me slur. It's not like it's never happened before. Come on. <laughs> we will see you next week. And thank you so much. Thank you.